Creating a reflection system for member variables allows us to introspect and manipulate instances of a user-defined type at runtime. In the first example, we have a class called GameObject. This class has three types, a transform, a string, and an unsigned integer. In order to identify each member variable, we will have to save the variable ID and the offset of that type within the class or struct. If we then also reflect upon the member variables, we can go more in depth and create a chain of member variable information. The transform struct has as members a translation vector, a scale vector, and a rotation quaternion. Going more in depth, we can reflect the members of the vector and the members of the quaternion. In the end, we are left with this chain of types. If we wanted to know the location of the W component of the quaternion in the game object, we just follow the chain of offsets. The offset of transform in the game object is 0, plus the offset of the quaternion in transform which is 32, plus the offset of the W component in the quaternion which is 16, equals an offset of 48. So, if we want to access the W component in the game object, we will just need to add 48 bytes to the address of the game object instance to get it. This system will allow us to make serialization systems, editors for games, debugging tools, and more. So, let's get started. We first define a struct called memberinfo. This will contain the name of the member field, the variable ID, so describing the type and its modifiers, then the offset inside of the type, the size inside of the type, and the alignment inside of the, inside of the type. And we store this in a static unordered map that takes the type ID and maps to a set of member infos. This mem these member infos will be sorted from uh, lowest offset to highest offset, so they will always be in order uh, in the way you define them inside of the type. We also define a special struct, which as constructor takes the type ID of the class the type it was defined in, the variable ID of the member variable, the name of the member variable, the offset, the size, and the alignment. And this will then register it inside of this function. Um, like the other function, it just puts it in the fields and then puts it in the static uh, hash map. We can then create a macro that just you put in the type and the name of the field. And using all that information, we can uh, create this function. It makes it easy to register these member variables. So here we have an example. We have three structs, the vector, quaternion, and transform. Then we register its members using the macro. And then we do a little test. We just print member infos. So we get member ID, get member infos. This will return the uh, mapped set. We go over that set, just print the info. And let's see what happens. So here we see the floats, all size 4, align 4, and then offsets 0, 4, and 8. Uh, same with the quaternion, and then the transform contains a vector for the translation, which is size 12, align 4, offset 0. Quaternion, uh, same, size 16, align 4, offset 12, and then vector, size 12, align 4, offset 28. So taking this concept further, we can make a serialization system. So here I make a transform, put some random values into it. Um, have the serialization function, which is defined somewhere else, but the serialization function doesn't know anything about these types. It just knows that these member variables were registered. So let's run it. And a JSON string is returned. Going even further, we can make a game object, which holds a transform, a name, and an ID, and even a scene, which holds the name a vector of game objects and an, an ordered map just for testing. Uh, do note that because the variables in a class are usually private, we cannot access them using the normal register member method. We have to define a friend struct and then use these register members macros inside of that struct. Um, just like a normal C++, how you, if you want to access private variables of another class, you can either inherit from it, or you can uh, make a friend class or struct. Now let's run this. So we have a game object. 
we randomize that game object. So we just put some random values into it and then serialize it. So here we go. We transform the translation, all of this. Let's do the scene. So we set the name of the scene. Uh, we put some objects into it and then add something to the map. Let's print it. Uh, here we go, JSON. And our final example, we will um, create a random scene. Uh, serialize it to a string, then deserialize it into another empty scene object to copy it, and then print that copy out. So here we go. Uh, all of these values are completely the same, so our system worked. Next video, I'll go deeper into this project and show how this uh, serialization system is made. Uh, until then, please have a look at the source code below where you can find the implementation.